one thing that um or uh, one thing that uh one thing that we uh have to realize one thing that we've uh known about a lot of you know entirely as a left tube is that um, there has even been leftist infighting between the Finnish Bolshevik High Kim and Premier Laos a, a, between in defense of two cans and cuck philosophy. But and my thoughts on this is that really most of it has to do with, you know, with the theory of the dictatorship of the proletariat and socialism rather if. Uh, socialism is a worker's ownership of the means of production and distribution, or if the dictatorship of the proletariat is a worker's ownership of the means of production. I wanted to make this video, you know, solely, um, you know, and probably, um, you know, with myself, but I did know I probably need help, uh, you know, especially if we're tackling, you know, practically three people. So I got a comrade of mine, uh, in here. Um, everyone, uh, say hi to Communist Cola. Hello, I am Communist Cola. I am a new left tuber, and I've come from Politogram, the wondrous world of Politogram. The wondrous world of Politogram, indeed, and <laughs> the scary world of Politogram. The scary world, yeah, exactly, exactly, scary world of a uh, Politogram. So, one thing I actually want to uh, specify is that, um, as a neo Trotskyist, even though I am a Leninist, you know, um, and. I believe Communist Cola is just an orthodox Marxist. Um, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I want to like say that um, as, you know, a neo-Trotskyist that, that no, socialism is a moneyless class of stateless society. The dictatorship of the proletariat is already the revolutionary transitionary stage into socialism and communism. Marx himself, nor Frederick Engels, and Marx, uh, nor Marx, Frederick Engels, or Vladimir Lenin actually made the difference between the two. That, in fact, that's entirely why Leon Trotsky opposed socialism in one country because socialism in one country, um, entirely thinks that uh, socialism is a worker's ownership of the means of production and distribution. But as we can see, that's entirely false. Oh yeah, of course. Just worker's ownership of the means of production could. It could actually mean uh, market socialism. Yeah, um, I and mean, we all know market socialism is not Marxist socialism. Right, and one thing I want to point out here is that um that Karl Marx uh, that a lot of uh, and one thing that I do hear a lot is that Trotsky opposed Karl Marx, but here's even a quote by Karl Marx that actually um thinks you know that that socialism is not exactly onto you know. Uh, is not exactly on that. Um, a quote. To make the revolution permanent until all the more property classes have been driven from their ruling positions, until the proletariat has conquered state power, and until the association of the proletarians has progressed significantly far, not only in one country, but in all the leading countries of the world. That competition between the proletarians all of these countries ceases, and at least the decisive forces of production are concentrated in the hands of the workers. By this, and and quote Karl Marx, right? But uh, by this, and entirely of this quote, you know, it, Carl, Leon Trotsky does actually make that idea and actually revise and not revise it, but like, uh, brings that idea up when he when he you know reestablishes onto the ideas of of the permanent revolution in the Bolshevik Leninist faction in the Bolshevik Party, uh, and, and here's another example of Karl Marx, you know, basically uh, saying about socialism and communism. In, in, quote, in 1847, socialism was a middle class movement, communism a working class movement. Socialism was on the com, uh, was on the continent, at least on respectable communism, uh, was the very opposite as our as our notion from the very beginning was that the emancipation of the working class must be the act of the working class itself. There could be no doubt as to which the the two names uh, we must take. Moreover, we have ever since been far from re repunding uh repunding it. Uh, sorry, I can't fucking read that word. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that happens all the time with reading Marx. Marx. Marx should have been a more simple man. Then again, if he was so simple, we wouldn't have such great stuff today. Yeah. Um. So already in itself, this is not like exactly say that socialism is you know a worker is exactly a worker's ownership that means production and distribution. Uh. In fact, um. Here's even another quote by Karl Marx. Um. 
Quote, between the, com between the capitalist communist society, there lies the period of the revolutionary transformation of one into the other corresponding into the, this is also a political transition period in which the state can be nothing but the revolutionary dictatorship of the proletariat. So by this, um, what is, why does Stalinist or Marxist Leninist, as like they call themselves, um, think that socialism is a worker's ownership of the means of production and distribution? Personally, I don't know. I honestly think that Stalin was smoking something very fucking strong when he came up with the idea of socialism in one country. Well, like, I think that I think it's simply uh, most likely a misreading of Marx. It is, yeah, or for sure. somebody who just didn't read Marx. Exactly. Because if you if you even just read Engels, you would notice that Engels himself says that there cannot be a communist nation. And we already know there's no distinction between socialists and communists when referring to Engels and Marx. Exactly. In fact, Engels actually does separate socialism and communism and uses socialism as a bad way. Socialism represents the things that they are against. Yeah. And, and what he describes by that is utopian socialism, uh, reformist yeah. socialism, democratic socialism in principles of communism and utopian socialism, socialism, like socialism, utopian, scientific, uh, anti during. He uses socialism as a way um, both for the communist movement and against the communist movement as a different corresponding to socialism Karl marx does the same especially also in in the manifesto of the communist party but the thing is with here um the thing is why is socialism referred as lower phase of communism it is no it is by far i agree it is the only really difference between socialism and communism though we would have to look at critique of the ghost gotha program or gotha program i call it um a lot of people call it gotha i don't know if that's actually the correct uh translate i call it i call it a gotha critique because that's how i see everybody else saying it and like the, i think that's like the actual german pronunciation gotha critique uh oh <laughs> um, I'm calling it a Critique of the Gotha program, but no. Um, in Critique of the Gotha program, Karl Marx says, quote, when we are to actually see the critique against LaSalle and um, Otto von Bismarck, we must see onto the actual two differences between socialism and communism and why these two, and why these two especially LaSalle, is not for the proletariat. One. Socialism. To each according to his labor and the material conditions by which his society is to become. Communism. To each according to their ability, to each according to their need. End quote. Karl Marx. In Critique of the Gotha Program. By this, there is a lower phase of communism. There is a higher phase of communism. But the, really the only difference between the two is that the lower phase of communism has a different way of distribution and has a different way of production entirely. And this yeah, is the they still produce some commodities under the lower phase. However, that commodity production's not really done at the same rate as it's done under capitalism, and it's not ran the same way. Instead, well, they implement the labor theory of value and use things such as labor vouchers. Well, the thing is, um, I would actually not really say that because. I, I, because even then, socialism is, you know, uh, you know, doesn't really have commodity production. Commodity production is essentially based on a need on which society is to become. That's, you know, that's basically, you know, applying that onto, uh, onto, you know, social, into socialism. But anyways, uh, moving on. By this, um, the the real notion onto the actual Marxist idea is that, so is that really socialism is is a moneyless class stateless society like communism. The only difference really being is that is that socialism has a different way of distribution and production. That's really the only difference onto onto that. Um and not only that, but um uh, not I'm only sorry. that you're you you oh, I thought you were cutting out. Oops. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, I have pushed to talk on Discord, so, uh, my bad. Uh, so it probably seems like I'm cutting out. Yeah. Anyways, um, one thing that we also have to realize is that, um, is also here in, in Critique of the Gotha program as well. What we have to deal with here is a communist society, not as, 
not it has developed on its own foundations but on the contrary just emerges it it emerges from capitalist society which th it th which is thus the every respect economically morally and intellectually still stamped with the birthmarks of the old society with whose womb it emerges okay so lower communism is meant to get rid of said aspects that remain well i mean the thing is the thing is like the dictatorship of the proletariat it already gets rid of the scars i mean it's just it's just like the scars that are left is to heal it that's essentially what um any but yeah and also um even here uh by by both uh Karl Marx and Engels uh in the preface of the of the German edition in 1872 quote no special stress is laid on the revolutionary measure proposed in the end of section 2 in view of the practical experience gained in the February Revolution and then the Par and then still more in the Paris Commune, where the proletariat for the first time held power for two whole months, this program has, in some details, been acquired. Uh, and even here, um, Frederick Engels also goes on to his give give his in intellects of socialism or a revolution in one country. Quote, will it be possible for this revolution to take place in one country? No. By creating the world market, big industry has already uh, brought uh, all the people of the earth into, into such close relation uh, with one another that none is independent of what happens to the others. It follows that the communist revolution will not merely be a national phenomenon, but but must take place simultaneously in all civilized countries in a universal revolution and will it accordingly have a universal range. One thing that I one thing that I understand about Finnish Bolshevik High Kim and even Premier Lyles is that both of them still claim that both of them still claim to be Marxist and Leninist. But here's the thing Lenin agreed with everything that Karl Marx and Frederick Engels said uh, in the quotes that I just uh, carried. Yeah, exactly. He, he refers to a lot of that stuff in uh, State and Rev. Yeah. And I believe it's chapter six where he, uh, it's either chapter five or chapter six. I'll have to go check myself later. But it's chapter five or chapter six where he lists out his a three plan goal towards communism. And the beginning one is resembles a lot what Marx called the DOTP. The second is lower communism, and the third is higher communism. Yeah, and what he called it was the first stage of communism. It wasn't exactly the lower phase of communism because he did make yeah, exactly. a distinguish between the two. The first stage of communism is a dictatorship of the proletariat, not to be misconsumed with socialism. Um, and even here, Lenin's speech delivered at the All-Russian Congress to the transport workers, he says, quote, I was coming through the hall just now. I saw a play card with this encryption. The reign of the workers and peasants will last forever. When I read this odd play card, which it is true, was not up in the usual place, but stood in the corner, perhaps it, it had occurred to someone that it was not very aptable and... Um, and it, he had to move it out of the way. When I read this strange play card, I, th I thought to myself, there, you have some of the fundamental and elementary things we are still confused about. Indeed, the reign of the workers and the peasants would last forever. We should never have socialism, for it implies the abolition of classes. And, and as long as there are a worker... There are workers and peasants. There are there there will be different classes, and therefore no full socialism. He's basically saying here that socialism is indeed a class of society. But the thing is, since it's a class of society, that it's a moneyless society because without classes, there's no need for money to be transported. And then if it's a moneyless if it's a moneyless class of society then it's also a stateless society because without money the state cannot exert its control and it cannot exert its control over the non-ruling class of course because the money is exactly what the state controls 
though I think another like I think another way you could remove a lot of the state power over money would be uh, such as the gold standard. If you notice, the, the, the state started to grow after, mostly after the gold standard was gotten rid of, and the state grew, gained more power over money. I'm Correct. starting to sound like an ANCAP here now, aren't I? <laughs> no, I've met ANCAPs. They are not, they are not sound like an ANCAP. ANCAPs should be like, oh, look at this stupid, uh, you know what, I'm, I'm on a tangent, you know, about like a video on the DOTP, that's, no. <laughs> All right, back to the DOTP. No more ANCAPs. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, also, another quote here by Lenin in the economic pol politics of the era of the dictatorship of the proletariat. Lenin says, quote, socialism means the abolition of classes. The dictatorship of the proletariat has done all it could to abolish classes, but classes cannot be abolished in one stroke. And classes still remain uh, and will remain. In the era of the dictatorship of the proletariat, the dictatorship will become unnecessary when classes disappear. And as I specified before, um, when it's a classless society, it's also a moneyless society. And when it's a moneyless society, it's also a stateless society. Because of course, yeah, it can never without it class, state and money can exist. With yeah, without class, money you know um, is essentially useless. And without money, the state is essentially useless. Yeah, exactly. There, these things that arbitrarily divide us no longer will, will no longer have a place in society. What this means entirely is that at the end of the goal is that um, go all the way back to you know the first part of the video, and I do say to make the revolution permanent until you know the until like all powers are handed into the workers by Karl Marx. That is the entirety of the message here. You cannot have a complete revolution without it being international and without it actually spreading out and then calling but and without it spreading out you can't call that socialism rather it has the desire to become socialist we must also look at the marxist leninist argument for this case which as a as somebody who used to be like big friends of marxist leninist i never really got too far into tankyism I, I, yeah, tankyism. That's what I'm gonna call. It. I that's what I call it a lot now to uh, not confuse. I honestly call it Stalinism because that's exactly what it is. I use tanky because I I just I just lump the Maoist, the Marxist, Leninist, and all of them into the same category because a lot of times they all agree on things. They just for some reason like to LARP differently. Yeah. You see, the Marxist, Leninists like to be Soviets, but the Maoists like to be the Chinese. Yeah, they like to be Mao. Yeah, exactly. Um, but anyways, um, either either way, um, even this can be even be backed by Lenin himself, even in this quote. Um, in in the third All Russian Congress, he says, "quote We are far from completed, uh, from ha from having completed even the transitional period from capitalism to socialism. We have never cherished the hope that we could finish it without the aid of the international proletariat." We never had any illusions that the that uh, that score, and we know how difficult it is the road that leads from capitalism to socialism. But it is our duty to say that our Soviet Republic is a socialist republic because we have taken this road, and our words will not be empty words. Essentially, what he's saying here is that the reason why. Um, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics was called, well, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics was... Was their goal. Their end goal. Exactly. Was their end goal. They weren't, they didn't actually call themselves socialists. They, they had, they had the desire to one day become socialist. They even said that's not exactly socialist. It was a worker state. And a yeah, worker state exactly. is a state controlled by the working class to, as a revolutionary transition to socialism and communism, to have the revolution permanent until capitalism is defeated. That's the entire point of everything. The entire point of the revolution is to make the revolution kinda like permanent. Uh, kind of like a communist waiting room. Yeah, communist waiting room, god damn it. <laughs> That's what we're going to refer to it right from now on. No more workers state. We're going to call it the communist waiting room. Okay, yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh, communist colon and uh, socialist links working together, calling it, 
Not the worker's state, but the communist waiting room. Yes. The the cola the cola linksist theory of the communist waiting room. <laughs> exactly. Um, Marx would be disappointed in us. Yes, indeed he would. But uh, anyways, one thing for sure that we have to uh, understand here is that also in the state and revolution, um, actually, hold on, I should probably give like some insight. Uh, in in the Soviet Union, uh, instead of actually abolishing the standing army and actually exerting essentially a proletarian militia or a workers' militia, instead of actually abolishing the state machine and you know the police force, um, which Lenin did do, you know, eventually, um, Stalin brought about the NKVD and the Soviet police force back on instead of actually replacing it onto a proletarian militia that involves the entire population and. And we can see that Lenin did attend to this, but um, entirely that, but entirely that that Stalin uh, refused to do it. All you have to do is literally just look at a, a paragraph in in the dual power, and then boom, you can see that is the truth. But also look at this point in State and Revolution. Quote, at a certain stage of the development of democracy, it first wheels together at the class and that wages a revolutionary struggle against capitalism, the proletariat, and enables it to crush, smash the atoms, wipe off the face of the earth, the bourgeois, even the Republican bourgeois, state machine, the standing army, the police, and the bureaucracy, and to substitute for them a more democratic state machine, but a state machine nevertheless in the shape of armed workers who proceed to form a militia involving the entire population. He's directly saying here, yeah, kill the kill the army, kill the police force, and not like actually kill them, but like dis abolish, abolish them. Yeah. Abolish, like, them. Abolish, abolish them. Abolish them. A really strong word. Yeah, abolish them. You know, I can't really say kill in YouTube. <laughs> You're so used to saying kill the police exactly but uh no seriously um he's basically saying here abolish the standing army abolish the police entirely because it is the remains of the old society and the purpose entirely of the revolutionary transitionary stage of the workers state i.e the dictatorship of the proletariat which is not the same as socialism is that it is is that rather it is an actual is that rather we are to still even abolish the, the, the police force and the standing army in, in the worker state and rather establish a proletarian militia. That's why even when Leon Trotsky took power like took power and like took the actual command of the Red Army, he Leon, Leon Trotsky and Vladimir Lenin never called it the Red Army because a Red Army or an army entirely would mean that that the that the worker state is a pure state instead of a semi state. Yeah. Exactly. It it presupposes a actual bourgeois state. Yeah. Instead, they called it the workers' militia, the people's militia, the the proletarian militia, etc. They called it the p. They called it the workers slash proletarian militia, and involving the entirety of the proletariat instead of a police force that has actually done justice more democratically than bureaucratically. That's the entire purpose here. And by this, we can even s still say here that that not only socialism is not is um is a moneyless class of stateless society, and that the dictatorship of the proletariat is mainly a is essentially the revolutionary transitionary stage to socialism, by which it is to heal the old scars of capitalism by establishing a centralized planned economy and, um of distribution and a workers' production. Uh, decentralized workers production but a centralized distribution entirely that uh, it, it takes the old of the mode of production and then establishes a new mode of production and takes the old um mode of distribution and establish a new mode of distribution as well as well as the means of production but the means of distribution being the same unfortunately of course but by this We can, but by this, we can now say that also not only is it that, but even in the Soviet Union, because um, 
that it was not exactly supposed to have a standing army or a police force at all. It was supposed to uh, dissemble the entirety of the bureaucracy in the Soviet Union, yet it failed to do that. And even then, what later happened further on was it led to state capitalism. Now, I can even, like, see even other Trotskyists, like, basically saying, oh, it was a degenerate worker state, but, uh, I mean, we can even clearly say onto, you know, the economic policies, especially after the, um, Moscow trials, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it was state capitalist. Anyways, uh, that's another, that's another thing, but, uh, anyways, we can even say, we can even still say here, um, that, yes, Socialism, regardless, is a moneyless class of stateless society, and that Hai Kim, the Finnish Bolshevik, and Premier Laos is essentially wrong. They are wrong. Wait, Premier Laos? Yeah, Maoist. I've never, I, I never actually heard of them. I've heard of Hakim and uh, Finnish Bolshevik. Oh, well, he's well, he's kind of new at I left, too, but yeah, he's a small Maoist um, YouTuber, and he made, like, a video about it as, like, a response to cut philosophy. But anyways, this is why I am, and this is why I, this is why I am, this is why I do disagree with Finnish Bolshevik and Haikim here, because they claim that cut philosophy and in defense of two cans are both revisionists and they're against Marx, while here... Here entirely, they even they're, they're they're going against Marx and Lenin, despite calling themselves Marxist Leninist. And it, it, uh, yeah, that one right there. Uh, there's only, the only reason uh, Stalin called it Marxism Leninism is to essentially make it out like he was carrying both the ideas of Lenin and Marx on. That, yeah, that's why he called the Marxist Leninist faction. Well, the Marxist Leninist exactly. faction. And he wanted to make it sound like he was carrying on both Lenin and Marx. Therefore, people were more likely to choose him. Yeah, and that's why, in response, Leon Trotsky created the Bolshevik Leninist faction. Why many Trotskyists do call themselves Bolshevik Leninist. Hell, I even call myself Neo Bolshevik Leninist. But uh, yeah. Anyways, that's entirely, and that's entirely why. Entire, uh, at all um marxism leninism is an extension of leninism which even then it, it destroys the entirety of lenin and marx's ideas which is I even mean, hypocritical to call a revisionist a revisionist form of uh leninism yeah they're yeah they are revisionists the revisionism of marx and lenin i do hate you know using the term of revisionist but yes yeah they are they are indeed revisionists. in this case this is they're literally revisionary yeah and then they claim for us to be revisionists which is absolutely hypocritical and just absolutely redundant and la and shows that they have no actual research whatsoever only of research of of revisionist that that go against Karl Marx, Frederick Engels, and Vladimir Lenin. The only truth here is that if we can say, if if we are actually say who did lead the torch um, of Lenin was Leon Trotsky onto his ideas of permanent revolution, because as we can go back, Karl Marx does say to have the revolution permanent until capital until like the until all powers are handed to the workers. And that's when Leon Trotsky did say, when he defines the permanent revolution as to make the revolution permanent under the di under the dictatorship of the proletariat, so that way capitalism it is to be defeated. So that until all cap until all capitalists are defeated and killed, and until all the powers and all and everything in the in the old scars of capitalism is handed into the powers of the working class. End quote. Leon Trotsky. This, this is the truth. This, this is this. This is the only. This is already proof enough that yes, Leon Trotsky did lead onto the actual torch of Marx and Lenin. Forget you know putting Stalin right next to Lenin. Put Trotsky right next to right next to Lenin instead. This is this is already. This is already proof enough that, yes, Trotsky did lead onto the actual torch onto it. And Vladimir Lenin, even then... Um, if I had to really state it, I don't... But yeah, people like Trotsky and Rosa, they were... Technically, they both carried the torch onwards. Because they both added things, and they both 
kept Marx's theory. Well, yeah, well, I do. They well, still I do even indeed like uh, like Rosa Luxemburg, even as Neo Trotskyist. I mean, <laughs> to understand a lot of Neo Trotskyist theory, you also have to read Rosa Luxemburg as well. So, yeah, I understand that. So essentially, it's our job since we still fall under the branch of Orthodox Marxists, no matter what. An Orthodox Marxist idea is to carry on Marx's work. Right. And to not carry on Marx's work ourselves would make us classical Marxists. So essentially, we are all the torchbearers. Right. But what I mean is, like, historically accurate. Yeah, you know, of course. If we're, we're talking Trotsky. about whoever actually carried the torch, really? Trotsky in the USSR, definitely. Yes, yeah, historically into like the actual what I'm saying, but yeah, entirely by this, um, this is already proof enough that you know, not that so, but it that socialism is a money this class of stateless society, and the dictatorship of the proletariat is is rather the workers' ownership and the means of production and distribution. Socialism cannot coexist under capitalism. For that, for that to imply is to say that economics is national, which is completely false. Economics oh, yeah. is inherently international. Whatever economic Mark, system... I find this in chapter 4 of uh, Capital, where he states that international commerce is one of the foundations of capital. Yes. Economics entirely is onto the international scale. Whatever economic system you have in one country affects the entire world, which that by that already means that it's entirely impossible to have one economic system in another in another eco and with to coexist with other economical systems. That's entirely false and that's entirely utopian way of thinking. Yeah, exactly. It's act it sounds a lot like a utopian socialist thinking. Essentially, that you can establish small communes. While you can establish communes, they're not necessarily communists. Yeah, they're not exactly communists. It's, it's, it's kind of the same thing, but of a national country instead, which even then yeah, it's still exactly. false. It's really, it, it really is false. Just because it's, it, just because it's a worker's ownership of the means of production does not mean it's socialist. Socialist it means that you know that capitalism has been defeated. Um, and that all hand and that all industrialized society has actually been handed into the workers, uh, has been handed to the workers, which is completely false. It ha like it hasn't done that, and it ha nor has it come close to doing that. It's only achieved one fine. It only achieved a minor of the first stage, only a minor of it, not the entirety of the first stage. But so by this already, even if you're going to like pull out, you know, probably some quotes you know, by Stalin, either either way, you know, economics entirely is onto the international scale. It's never onto the national scale ever. I can't imagine someone actually using a Stalin quote. I've never actually seen a Marxist Leninist actually use a Stalin quote. I have. For real? I've never yeah. seen it. Oh, yeah, I have. I have. Yeah. It's almost as if they know he doesn't have that many good. So by so by this already, um, in conclusion, um, yes, socialism is a moneyless class of stateless society and Finnish Bolshevik, High Kim, and Premier Laos, you're incorrect. You are just incorrect entirely. And you clearly still have, I wouldn't necessarily say revisionist. I'm going to be more nice, but you have. You Misled. Have, you misled the actual ideas of Marx, Lenin, um, well, Marx, Frederick Engels, and Vladimir Lenin. Would you like to say anything, uh, com uh, Communist Cola? I think you mostly said what I could say. Really? Oh, nice. They, uh, yeah, you, you've really summed up what I would say to anybody, but what I do say is people should read Marx. Do if you read anybody, read Marx first, or at least read at least read Engels. Engels is much easier to read than Marx, and Engels summarizes a lot of what Marx says within his own writings. And then when you're done with that, move on to actually reading Marx. And once you read Marx, you can go on and read other stuff like by Kropotkin. Like I I didn't read Kropotkin, Kropotkin first. I had to read Marx first, and after reading. And after reading, I didn't even read the full bread book, but uh, 
after reading some of the bread book, I realized most of a lot of not most of it, a lot of the stuff inside of it made sense. However, it didn't make some of it didn't make sense. That's why you need to uh, read Barks because things like uh, Stalin can mislead you if you haven't already. One thing that makes a mistake entirely, uh, and this is actually where I actually agree with Marxist humanists um, a lot, is that with like this interpretation that the Soviet Union was was socialist, is that the problem is once they read Marx, they always think that the Soviet Union is socialist, um, and that's what leads the people into Marxism Leninism. Instead, what you need to do, you need to assume that the Soviet Union was not socialist. In fact, you can't really say what the Soviet Union was until you actually read Marx. And that's when you can actually determine, okay, was it socialist or was it not? That's the only really way. Uh, and that's actually where I do agree with the Marxist humanist, you know, and Dreva Deskaya, you know, that we have to realize that, um, that Marx, um, that Marx was really the first guy, and what what we need to do first is read him first. And a good like you know at least like start to reading Marx is the Economical Philosophical Manuscripts of eighteen eighty four. Oh yeah, and uh, if any starting leftist, if you if you meet any starting leftist or even are one, Principles of Communism is the best start for defining whatever you need to learn. And right. from there, you can go and read Marx, and f and after reading the principles of communism, you'll have a understanding of what each of the words mean. Correct. Um. Anyways, I think that will be a good wrap up of the video entirely. Thank you to Communist Cola for coming out in this video, uh, and you know, uh, giving his thoughts, you know, with me, and actually uh, giving his uh, reason and you know, thesis onto everything into Marxist theory entirely as a response to Finnish Bolshevik, Hi Kim, and Pramil Lyles. So thank you, Communist Cola. Uh, thank you for actually having me on. And I just realized it's going to sound weird when I might actually record my own intro that I'll just attach at the beginning to let people know that I actually, to let people know that I, but um, thank you for having me on. I, this was actually very enjoyable. And it's my, this is my second video, and I'm already uh, doing some collabs. I, it's surprising. Well, yeah, man. I mean, comrades gotta stick out for each other. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, and you do seem like a really cool guy, and you, you know, your channel was very small compared to mine. Well, I mean, I, I shouldn't brag. <laughs> I, I really shouldn't brag because. Hey, like, are you insulting me now? Hey, no, no, I don't mean that. <laughs> I'm, okay okay well I'm sorry. Uh, thank you yeah but yeah no thank you for coming on i actually really appreciate it um and i always wanted to talk about this for a while you know now but uh yeah thank you for coming on and um please subscribe to uh communist cola link in the description down below uh subscribe to me if you want to you know be let uh, you know oh yeah let know. on my channel if you're watching on my channel i i would definitely have any sources that he that he cites and i will as well have his channel linked in the description so make sure you go check that out right yeah thank you for uh watching this video and uh have a good one um socialist links communist cola are out